Heinemann Higher, Chapter 9 on Integration, the Mixed Questions Exercise 9 out of the end, number 12, form a higher question, lengthiest one. There's two curves intersecting, enclosing an area between them. This area is to be cut in half by the line x equals k, so these two parts are the same. Represent these two equal parts by separate integrals, each involving k. Well, first of all, I'll need to find out where that division is. I can do the first one straight away because it's going from 0 to k, I presume. Well, I know that 0 fits, zero, zero fits both equations, but so I'll set it off this way. I was going to give them names up there, I'll give them names down here. So y equals x squared, I'll call that 1. y squared equals x, I'll call that 2. And to find the intersections, I'll substitute 1 in 2. So where it says y there, I'm going to write x squared. So x squared squared equals x. That means x to the 4 minus x equals 0. Taking out a common factor of x, I've got x cubed minus 1. And that's only got the one solution there. So I've got x equals 0 or x equals 1. So that means they're crossing again at 1. So now I can write the two integrals. So it's definitely starting at 0 and it's finishing at 1 and crossing at k. So if I give them names, maybe I'll say the area on the left. The area on the left would be the integral of, it goes from 0 to k, moving along the x, sweeping up the areas, of the upper minus the lower. Now the upper's in the form of y squared equals x. I'll need to change that. If I've got y squared equals x, I'll have to rewrite that as y equals the square root of x, or x to the power of half. So it's going to be the upper, which is x to the half, minus the lower, which is x squared dx. The area on the right is going to be exactly the same, because the upper is still the upper, only this time I'm going from k onto 1 of x to the half minus x squared dx. y-coordinate at the top, take away the y-coordinate at the bottom, so they both have to be written in the form of y equals. Right, that was part a. Part B presumably says find k, does it? Part B, equate the integrals to show you get this equation. Right, that's OK, so you end up with an equation in k. Well, if the areas are equal, so I'll make that statement, if al equals ar, that means that the integral from 0 to k of x to the half minus x squared is the same as the integral from k on to 1 of x to the half minus x squared dx. See me running out of room soon. So just integrating that. So I have add 1 to the power, 3 upon 2. Divide by that power, but instead of writing over 3 upon 2, multiply by the reciprocal. Minus add 1 to the power 3. Divide by that. So I've got x cubed. Evaluate that at k. Take away the value at 0. Equals. Other side is going to be exactly the same. 2 thirds x to the 3 upon 2 minus 1 third x cubed evaluated at 1 and k. Now, one thing I can do straight away is this. A third is appearing in every single term, so I could take a third straight out of it. It would appear as a common factor here and a common factor there, and thereby disappear. So I could just rewrite this as 2x to the 3 upon 2 minus x cubed evaluated at 0 and k equals, same again, 2x to the 3 upon 2 minus x cubed evaluated at k and 1. Right, so what does that lot give you then? So it means working out at k, I'm not going to put the bracket, I'll just go straight in with it. So I've got 2k to the 3 upon 2 minus k cubed, I'll put minus 0 just now, equals, now if x is 1, it's just going to be 2 times 1, I'll have to put the working in, 2 times 1 to the 3 upon 2, but 1 to the power of anything is just 1, minus 1 cubed, minus the same thing over here, 2k to the 3 upon 2 minus k cubed. Now that can go over and join this one, so there will be two of them on this side. So I've got 2 times 2k to the 3 upon 2 minus k cubed is equal to, and that part's just going to come to 2, since I've got to work this out anyway, it's going to equal 2 minus 1. So that means now I've got 4k to the 3 upon 2 minus 2 take 2k cubed equals 1. And then if I bring it over to this side and read it that way, finally I've got 2k cubed minus 4k to the 3 upon 2 
and plus the 1 is equal to 0. So there's an equation from which you can find the value of k and you can spot straight away you've got a quadratic in disguise. In other words, if I square that term, I'd end up with that term. So I've got a term squared, a term and a constant, a quadratic. Still, part c. Now in part c it says use this substitution p squared for k cubed to find the value of k. So if p squared is equal to k cubed, that means I've got 2p squared straight away, that implies that p is equal to k to the 3 pin 2. So I've got 2p squared minus 4p plus 1 equals 0. There's a case of factorise it if it does factorise. 16, discriminant, check what factorises. 16, take away 8 times 1 is 8. 8 is not a perfect square, it doesn't factorise, I'll have to use the formula. So the formula will be p equals the negative of the middle coefficient, the coefficient of p in its own, 4, plus or minus. Now I know I'm looking for a positive value, but in this case I'm not sure straight away whether the minus will be sufficient to knock that 4 down into a negative. Over, twice the product, twice the first one I mean, which is 4, and this part's going to be square the middle, 16, take away 4 times 2 times 1, take away 8. So that's going to be root 8, which is 2 root 2, 4 2 is 2 root 2. So what I've actually got for p then is I've got 4 over 4, which is 1, plus or minus 2 over 4, which is a half root 2. So the two values of p are either 1 minus a half root 2, and root 2 is about 1.4, so that is a positive value, or 1 plus a half root 2, which means to get k, unfortunately, I'm going to have to say k is equal to p to the two thirds. So the k is either going to be 1 minus a half root 2 to the power two thirds, or 1 plus a half root 2 to the power two thirds. Now it looks as if there's two answers here, because that's a positive value and that's a positive value. But this number is going to come to less than 1, because you've got 1 minus about 0.7, whereas this is going to come to more than 1, well obviously because you've got 1 plus some positive amount which must give a number which is greater than 1. And if you've got a power of a number which is greater than 1, that is any positive power of a number which is greater than 1, the result is greater than 1. And x, sorry, k in this case comes to less than 1, which means that the answer is k equals 1 minus a half root 2 to the power 2 thirds. Since I know that k has to be greater than 0 and less than 1, so that excludes this one. And it's just a case of, now that's the exact value of it. If you want a decimal approximation, you can use your calculator. And that gives you 0 0.44103 and so on. So we'll just take it to a couple of decimal places. K is equal to 0 0.4103, there are three significant figures. 0 0.441. There. That would have been the question, although that would have been the exact answer, which of course is preferable since this is now approximate.